Okay, I'm back again for another go at this book. And while I like this page, and this yellow really appealed to me when I put that piece of collage down, um, this is the back side of this book, and it's very neutral and um, earth colors. So I think that something's been bothering me about it a little bit, and I think that that's what it is. And I think if we look at like that with these, it just doesn't really fit. And it doesn't necessarily have to, but it is all one book. If you look at the next page, those, that's, I think, a similar enough color scheme and not so jarringly different that I think that that's gonna be okay. So what I think I'm gonna do, at least as a start, is just get rid of this acid yellow. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna put something underneath here just in case. And I've got some white and some um, Naples yellow. Oh, uh, well, hopefully that will work. Let's see. It's not the Naples yellow that I like. So it might just turn out to be too beige. But then again, over this acid yellow, <laughs> it might work out. So just kind of toning that down a little bit. See there. I think I like that better. See what I can do about I was thinking as I was looking over this book again how I ended up with green in it. Green is it's a funny color. I love nature. I love trees. I have a hard time working with green in art. And I think that's probably how it ended up in this book. But it doesn't exactly, hmm, doesn't exactly work well with the other things that are happening here. So. A little bit of green will be all right, though. Let's see if I can just, I mean, I think that that's a lot better. I'm happier with that. What did I do on the next page? Let's get that out of the way. Get the palette out of the way. So I wanted to put more of that yellowish sort of a color here as well. Let's see how much different that is. Oh, I lost my brush. There it is. Than the deadness. That's not as different as I want to think it is. So let's see what happens if I mix some of it up a little bit with some 
this and then maybe if I some uh, that's gloss medium maybe a little bit of white if I go with a different value that might help it as well so I got to thinking I wanted some of that up maybe in here somewhere just my perception it just does not yeah it's just not the same color <laughs> to me so it's probably gonna make me unhappy later on too but that was a um look text basics um maples yellow this is this is a uh, Holbein Naples yellow. Let's see if you can see the difference. It's just yellowier, just a little bit. And it's just enough that I sure notice it. I don't know, I have a really weird traumatic history with beige. <laughs> it's my mother's favorite color. <clears throat> so, um, I'm not a fan, but I like a nice creamy yellow. And I think the Naples yellow in the whole line is a nice creamy yellow. So I bet I'm going to get this mixed up. I've been saying this for years, and I bet I'm going to get this mixed up, and we won't even be able to tell the difference. But it looked like it to me, and it's amazing how even subtle differences in color do make a difference. Yeah, see, once you get that mixed up, it's it's just a prettier color. It's yellower. So what value do I want then? I want that to come a little closer to here, but I don't want it to be right on the center. And then maybe that's, yeah, that's too yellow. Let's see, more like that. I also did not mean to bring it down that far, I don't think. Or maybe more like right to there. So let's see. And I've got these cool little tools. Let's see if I can find the right one. These are little silicone tools for, um, apparently they use them for nails, for nail uh, decorating and stuff. And I love how they push through paint. Get wonderful lines. happening that's getting busier again and that's what I was trying to get rid of okay well we'll just move on past that and think about it and maybe or should I just smooth those out some it with fewer lines in it but when I went over it again I think I oops I maybe covered it up too much okay this was uh, thinner and juicier I see what's happening now well it's variety I'm gonna leave it for now we'll see this I am now, I think, happy with still. This page I am very happy with still. 
This page is stuck. Oh, okay, this is the one I was working on when last we spoke. And, hmm, interesting. Um, I glued these three triangles down. I liked the um, little bit of purple there and I tried to put a little bit more and it got away from me. So, what I'm gonna do is get another brush and some of this white with some gloss medium. And let's try and just knock that back a little more. I want some of it in there because I did like how that was working out. I just went too far. Because too much is just too much. that was something and then I also had made last time these little guys so I was thinking about repeating these dots in other ways in other places and so what could I do with that I don't have the dark blue <laughs> kind of cool. And then here's a super light one. I don't know what happened there. Oh, it's the paper covered up a little bit of that green there. Let's see, I was thinking about... Definitely going to have to carry this through to the next page. So maybe stick another one down. But I need to think of now there, I've got a circle there, a circle there. If I use this one, so the paint has come over the edges of my circles a little bit. But if I uh, either just pull it off or kind of tuck it under. I'm finding these things don't really stick all that well, so once I figure out where I'm going to put them, I usually put a little bit of matte medium or um, you know gloss or medium or something underneath them to just to to decide. Yeah, I like that to stick them down well. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so goodness, my tools are getting dirty and neglecting things. Let's do that with those so they stay put. Because that might be, and that makes a pretty nice, interesting composition with areas of rest now. So, that I think has a little bit of white in it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and stick down at all now, huh? Well, for heaven's sake. There we go. I think that's going to hold. Maybe I should have just gone under. Or... Oops. Yeah, I got that one nice and smooshy too. Okay. 
Okay, I think I'm not gonna worry as much about that one. It seems to be stuck. I'll try and just go over the top of it. And if it peels off, I'll use something thicker underneath a, a gloss or a gel instead of a fluid medium. I don't know, we'll come back to that one again also. So that's still wet. And then I wanted to start moving a little bit further ahead because it helps me to keep developing these pages um, over time for some of them. So you can see these are, these other pages here just have their very first initial marks and uh, things glued to them and stuff. And I started gluing other things here. I was looking at, I think I was looking at that with this and wondering, because of the repetitions in color and a way to connect these two areas together, cover up a little bit of that beloved green. <laughs> Doesn't bother me as much there though. They're just interesting marks. So what do I think? I take a little bit of that extra material off there. Well, the thing is, don't think too much. That is the trick. So, so what I'm gonna do instead is grab a brush. And then I've got this with the yellow. The dots are sort of a repetition of what's happening there. I don't know, I think I'm gonna with that one, just move that all down this way a little bit further and just sort of stick it somewhere. Oh, I don't know, it's not doing anything for me because the yellow's not picking anything up, but just do it. I'm thinking too much and I'm probably off camera. Okay, so let me bring this this way. It's just a kind of a random spot. Eep. Let's see if I can do this without goofing up what I just did. That's pointing right to the center of the picture plane. I'm not crazy about that. So I think what I'm going to do is just fold it back. And what else am I going to do? So far so good. I have so many pieces of paper just laying around on my table here. It's kind of driving me crazy. I also have this brush sitting here that's full of paint. So I'm gonna just spray that paint on my palette, give myself a little more time with it. And this is, yeah. I still have, I have a few things here that I had floating around. This is a little bit more from that page with that interesting yellow. That was what appealed to me about that, that and the um, text. That white caused me some problems before, so I think I'm gonna just eliminate that. And let's see. At least some of it. sort of like that B, so, well, and it stayed intact, too. How about that? So 
that's kind of interesting. I haven't had that for a while. So repeating elements throughout the book gives it cohesion. How about that? I get two pages worth of bang out of that. Gonna have trouble with that though. It's a long, thin fold. I would be easy. It would be easier to do it that way. So this is one of those places where having a dry brush would be good. And I may have gotten that too soupy too. Sometimes too wet with with newspaper type, you know, this thin magazine type paper. It just gets too wet and it causes problems. It causes buckling and yeah, of course in the book, it doesn't matter that much. I don't know, I've seen other people do this very successfully and I have never had a lot of luck with collaging this type of paper, but in this sort of a book, I just don't care. seems to be stuck on the end off of the end of my table and I'm having <laughs> oh gosh I'm having all sorts of difficulties here we go there it is where did I put that there it is okay. oh I put that right over some really cool lines well that's okay too sort of like that's a little bit about a naturalist John Muir in this sort of planty landscapey sort of thing what's the turn back here are just stuck together okay so I wish I hadn't dumped that in the water but I did This is that very similar color here, and I like those marks. And this is similar too, and then the orange is really, it's very, very vivid though. I'm trying to decide if that makes any sense with what I'm doing. Kinda does. And if it's a little pop of color on a page, what's the harm? I'm not crazy about this area here. Am I off camera again? There we go. I'm not crazy about this area here. It's just kind of bleh. So I think, yeah, I was worried about those and they're not doing any, much of anything there. So let's see. Oh, 
like a little pop of orange going across a couple of pages. So you can see, just not thinking too much, just kind of finding something I sort of like and just going with it. Now these, these pages have been sealed with some matte medium and that is helping me out because a lot of what's underneath here is water soluble. Oops, but it's not completely sealed, I see. <laughs> but that's okay too, because that then is sort of integrating this piece of paper onto the page before I ever even do anything else with it. Okay, so I kind of like that, how that turned out. I don't know if that's stuck underneath there. Maybe, maybe not. And then these marks. Let's see. I'm not a big fan of the straight edge of a piece of paper. So that might be good to bring in maybe well, my normal thing would be to do that, so I wonder if I... <laughs> That's going to be a problem right there, I can tell. But I don't want that in the center of the page either. That could be kind of cool. Across the top. Hmm. I like it down the side. This little scraper thing here that other people have a lot of luck with too. Let's see, maybe in this case, since this isn't magazine paper. It happens to me anyway when I do something like this with magazine paper. Ugh. I um, It scrapes the color right off of the page. But that worked out very, very nicely with that, so maybe I'll try it on this one too. Okay, so as you can imagine, this sort of thing would just keep on occurring. Um, this also helps me clean up my desktop a little bit. I want more of that color. Oh, that's sort of cool. <laughs> you know what's going to happen though, right? Let's see if I can keep it drier and keep it off the top until I scrape it. Then we've got this awesome bee here. wet on top before I scraped over it, but good enough. 
Okay, so these pages are becoming more interesting to me. That is part of the plan, is to just keep pushing and moving. Oh, look at this piece of paper. That is cool. Love that mark on that. So someplace that doesn't have interesting marks, that will be good for, but not right now. Okay, I think for now, you get the idea. And I am so far stretched out with this that, oh, here's a spot to put that. Here's a spot to put it right here. And then I'm just gonna give it a rest. Look at all that, I went crazy there. So I think this would be a good place for this to tone things down a little bit. Probably one of many things, trying to tone that area down. That's just newsprint, and I don't know, that the wrinkles just flatten out better on that, and I don't really mind wrinkles either. It's for, they bug me in the um, newspaper bits. Is that making that any better than what it is? I don't think so. Let's see. Oh, look at what else I've got here. This is interesting. It's another tiny little bit. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> sticky magnet back of this and I was trying to match the paint and that made sort of an interesting bit of stuff here hmm Mostly. Yeah, that worked pretty well. So I'm successfully kind of covering up some of this stuff that bothers me without that status. Hmm. Oh, look at all the paint here. Okay, we should use some of this paint up too. So for paint, yeah, let's just surprise myself. White and yellow. Was on completely off camera. I just get thinking about this stuff and off I go. Looks like I painted right around that, and that's not exactly the idea here either. So let's bring that up to there. And the other thing that I could do with that would be to take something would give me a nice black mark, like, oh, that's nice. This is a dark wash um, Derwent sketch. So what if I, that's kind of, oh, 
Always interesting to make marks into wet paint. Okay. Now we've got this, which is not as yellow, but Go ahead and put all those marks in and then I cover them up and then I that's more interesting to me than when I started. Let's cover that up a little bit too while I've got the paint here. Not too much, but I'm kind of enjoying that now peeking through there. It's brighter and more hopeful to me. I like that. And what about what about Goodness, where do you suppose a credit card would be? Somewhere underneath all of this book. Ha, found it. Oh, this is a floppy one. Well, let's see what it does. Okay, that's kind of cool. Didn't have a lot of, I didn't have any gel medium on that, so it's not, um, clearing away. Uh, wiping off as it did so easily with the pages that were covered with gel medium. That's something about that, because I know that's gonna be a problem later on. I don't know about that right along the edge there either. I like what the coffee does, the instant coffee. Espresso, I should say. I love these marks here. Let's see, once again, can I maybe scrape through some of it while still keeping that center? I haven't made any decisions about colors or anything, but that caught my eye, and you know, that's just another way that your intuition talks to you. What catches your eye? bunch of lines right down the center of a page there. Just trying to figure out where it was.
Okay, so just putting stuff down, editing it out, putting it down, editing it out. I think that's a good place to stop for today. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to like the video, sign, um, follow my channel if you'd like notifications for um, newly released videos. And I will see you in the next one. Let me know if you're interested in watching this book develop.